Today, I will introduce the low carbon stabilization solidification of contaminated sediment. With the development of the Chinese economy, nowadays China has many world class container ports such as Shanghai, Shenzhen, Ningbo, Hong Kong. Today, I will select the case in Hong Kong because I study my PhD in Hong Kong, has some experience about, uh, uh, about the sediment treatment. To, to maintain the sufficient depth of the shipping line, the sediment, especially in the, contaminant, in the, in the con container ports, should be judged annually. And due to the marine activities, such, such sediment is usually contaminated. So before disposal or before recycling, it should be treated. In Hong Kong, from this table, we can find that the judged sediment, in, the amount of judged sediment increased every year. And in 2016, the judged sediment is exceeds 10, 10 million cubic meters and about one third are contaminated sediment. The sediment has high content of organic matter, about 6.9%. It also was contaminated by the heavy metals such as zinc, copper. So the sediment should be checked. It should be treated. The convention, conventional method for the sediment remediation, just the disposal of sediment in the, in the mud pits and uh, the sediment transport to the mud pits and will cover with uh, clean sand. But this method will easily lead to the secondary, secondary pollution due to the nearby marine activities. So it needs long-term monitoring. For example, in Hong Kong, the contaminated mud, sediment mud pits located near the Hong Kong airport. With the development of Hong Kong airport, there, there should be, the sediment should be judged and transport to other places. So, the Hong Kong government uh, want to design some method to treat such contaminated sediment. We, su we select the uh, solidification and the stabilization method. We try to mix with sediment with some binder to recycle the contaminated sediment into useful construction materials, such as load bed materials. It can be used for the construction materials and with low environmental impacts. This is judged marine sediment. This sediment with high clay content. If we use this sediment for the construction materials, it will lead to low strength due to the high content of clay compared to the natural aggregate. And also the organic matter in the sediment will delay the semen hydration lead to low compressive strength, such, uh, such high, content, high content of heavy metals also would delay influence the semen hydration, lead to the low property of the final product. In our previous study, we tried to add some, some filler and the fibers to reinforce the skeleton of the structure. It can increase the compressive strength by three times. And also, we use some thermal treatment, uh, alkali extraction, to remove the organic matters to improve the property. It is also very useful, but this method will increase the time, in increase the economic costs. So, we try to find some uh, sustainable by the sustainable materials to treat this contaminated sediment. In this case, we use some industrial waste, such as low calcium waste, like uh, fly ash, incinerator sewage sludge ash. It, it contains high content of silic oxide, may facilitate the pozzolanic reaction, and generate some CSH to further improve the property of the sediment blocks. 
also we also buy also add some calcium rich materials such as ggbs and the calcium carbide residues to provide the hydraulic reaction to improve the improve the performance of the final products so this is a judged sediment we can add a little bit of cement and add the fine the aggregate to reinforce the structure and add some industrial waste to to re partially replace cement combine them together to produce the sediment blocks we also use co2 cooling to improve the improve the reaction of the sediment blocks so in Hong Kong, if we want to recycle this contaminated sediment into paving blocks, firstly, it needs to pass the TCLP requirement, and then it should provide the uh, high compressive strength for the paving block for pedestrian use. It should, the compressive strength should be higher than 30 MPa, for vehicle use, the stress should be higher than 45 MPa. This is the experiment procedure. We use the dry mix method. Use the pressure to produce the sediment blocks. Use air cooling and CO2 cooling. We also do the test the mechanical stress, reachability of the final products and use the microstructure, microstructure analysis, mineralogical analysis to explain the SS mechanisms. In this study, we select the contaminated marine sediment, select the binder to aggregate ratio at 1.3, water to binder ratio at 0, 0 0.28. This is a very low low water to cement ratio with this is the, the the reference product we use 20 20 25 percent cement and the 75 percent aggregate the aggregate contains the sediment it shows the high compressive stress meet the requirement with the addition of addition of some industrial waste to re partially replace cement at the dosage of 20%, it will slight, slightly reduce the compressive strength, but also can improve the water resistance. This material still uh, fulfills the requirement. Comp among these four materials, we find uh, some calcium-rich material like, like GGBS CCR. It can provide a relatively high strength at seven days because the hydraulic reaction is really, relatively fast. By comparison, the low calcium material with high silica, high silica content, it shows low strength development. Because the postulanic reaction is relatively slow, we use the QXRD to quantify the compounds in the final product. After 28 days air cooling, we can find that there are some similar content of CSH gel in the PFA and the GGBS added materials. So these materials show the comparable compressive strength to the OPC samples. But from this, this, this figure, we also find that there is more than 30% unreacted cement in this system. So in the marine sediment, the, CO, the OPC with air cooling is not very effective because the organic matter and the heavy metals will delay the hydration process. So we want to use CO2 cooling to facilitate the reaction. CO2 cooling also call, was also called accelerated carbonation. This is natural carbonation. It's relatively slow, near more than one year. The, the, the degree of carbonation may be very, still very light 
But acid carbonation will use the high concentration of CO2. It will, it will carb carbonate these materials in a very short time. But the moisture content is very important. If we use high moisture content in the system, the high moisture content will handle the, the CO2 diffusion lead to low degree of carbonation. But if there's no water or very limited water, it also will delay the high uh, carbonation, also will delay the further Re, uh, further hydration of the cement based product because cement is essential for the hydration. So we 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 adjust the moisture content in the mixture, and we also find that with the high moisture content, the the carbonation is very slow, and if we adjust uh, what reduce the moisture content. So, so it will accelerate the carbonation. And usually, the, it will release the largest heat in one hour. And uh, too much water in the system, the humidity in the cooling chamber is relatively high. It's not very suitable, suitable for the carbonation. From this, uh, the compressive stress, we can find that this is one day air cooling. This is one day CO2 cooling. CO2 cooling is very effective for enhance the, enhancing the early strength. But uh, high moisture content, it result a low degree of carbonation and uh, result in the low compressive strength. We, this is been a sailing test. We can find this air cooling. After CO2 cooling, the color turns into colorless. It means most of calcium hydroxide in the system was carbonated into the calcium carbonate. And at the moisture content of 3.3%, is is optimal, optimal moisture content. It can provide the provide the favorable carbonation and also provide the favorable re, re, uh, hydration of the cement-based product. After air, uh, CO2 cooling, if we add the additional air cooling, it can further improve the stress due to the uh, continued carbonation and the rehydration. From TGA result, we can find that uh, after one day CO2 cooling, most of the calcium hydroxide were turned into the calcium carbonate, and the CS, uh, cash, uh, calcium silicate were turned into the CSH gels. After seven day air cooling, further carbonation and cement hydration occurred. So, in the new peaks of the calcium hydroxide appeared in this uh, curve. Then we use a CO2 cooling for the for the waste incorporated system. If we incorporate some calcium rich materials, it can sequestrate a lot of CO2 in the system. But the silica rich materials is not very effective because during carbonation, some calcium will react. So with insufficient calcium in the system, it will not, it cannot activate the, the PFA and the ISSA for the pozzolanic reaction. So CO2 cooling is very suitable for the calcium rich system. In this system, we can find especially for the GGBS, lot of calcium hydroxide turned, turned into the calcium carbonate. But uh, the pozzolanic reaction was uh, delayed. And after the CO2 cooling, we detect the rich TCLP reachability of the, of the sediment blocks. We can find the calcium rich materials can reduce uh, the reachability of toxic element. 
because it can enhance the, it can increase the pH of this system, reduce the leachability. Because most of toxic element in alkali condition has the low solubility. CO2 cooling will slightly reduce the pH, so result in the increase of the leachability, but uh, it is still acceptable. So we use, in this system, we use some green materials combined with CO2 cooling to recycle the sediment into eco-friendly paving blocks. To further improve the property and reduce the carbon footprint, we use some magnesium oxide cement, MgO, to partially replace the OPC. Because OPC is a commonly used material with high mechanical strength, but uh, also have associated with high carbon emission, we, will, we want to use the magnesium cement. This cement uh, with high compatibility with some impurities because it can provide a sufficient hydroxide. And uh, this cement with during production has low energy consumption and uh, during the cooling it can absorb a, a lot of CO2 in the system. But it also has some disadvantage such as low water resistant, low, com low compressive strength. So we want to combine them together to utilize the advantages, overcome the individual drawbacks. Uh, this is binary cement system. If we uh, increase the content of magnesium oxide, the leachability of the toxic element significantly reduced uh, because it can provide a sufficient hydroxide to in increase the pH, so it can uh, in, in, in enhance the immobilization of this toxic element. But uh, the 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 hydration products, the magnesium hydroxide, is relatively weak, so the strength reduced gradually. From the XRD result, we can find the addition of MG, MOC will generate the large amount of hydro magnesium hydroxide. And uh, af after 28 days air cooling, more than 40% cement un unreact. So we also want to use CO2 cooling to facilitate the re reaction process. After one day CO2 cooling, the strength increased 2.84 volt. And uh, additional air cooling, we can find uh, it can improve the strength, especially with additional air cooling and additional moisturizing. And uh, after seven days, additional seven days uh, cooling, the strength can as higher as more than 45 MPa. It can meet the requirement of paving block for vehicles. Acylate carbonation, the magnesium oxide turn into magnesium hydroxide, magnesium carbonate, and the cement also can be carbonated. And we can find that after additional seven day July, additional seven day air cooling in the July system, it uh, the samples can be continued carbonated, a lot of calcium carbonate, but uh, the color still into colorless, means very few amount of calcium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide. But in the wet system, the rehydration occurred. Some, some surface turned into slightly pink color. Also, the TGA result shows that in after, after CO2 cooling, more, more hydration and the carbon, hydrolate and the carbonates are uh, produced and additional air cooling can further increase the hydration product and the carbonation product. Uh, from the MIP result, we can find that after, after CO2 cooling, the porosity of the product reduced, especially 
after additional air cooling in the wet conditions. The, the CO2 cooling can fuel the capillary pores and additional air cooling can further improve the methyl pores. And uh, we use the CO2 cooling for this binary system. This is zero uh, percent MOC means uh, pure OPC system. This this is uh, this one hundred percent MOC means uh, M pure o MOC system. We can find uh, both CO2 cooling can benefit the strength improvement in all the samples, but uh, CO2 cooling is very effective for this materials, binary system, with 20% MOC to 60% MOC. So the binary system is uh, in the, during the CO2 cooling is very suitable. We can, because we can, uh, from the TJ, uh, TJ result, we can find uh, the greater proportion of carbonates and hydrates in the binary semen system because the MGO in the in the binary system can provide the nucleation site to improve the carbonation. Also, we can find from SEM image we can find the there is a positive relationship between ox oxygen and the carbon and uh, there is a uh, uh, high concentrate of magnesia, there is low uh, concentrate of calcium. It means it generates the magnesium calcite in the system during the carbonation of this binary system. And we also conduct the TCLP test, find that the MGO addition can significantly reduce the reduce the leachability of most heavy metals. And, uh, and the CO2 cooling just slightly influences the immobilization efficiency. So uh, because, uh, because the MGO can provide sufficient hydroxide, so it has a large buffering capacity for the pH change. So the binary semen system and the CO2 cooling also very effective for the in, for the stabilization and solidification of this contaminated sediment. Lastly, I will quickly introduce some other case. We also recycle the sediment into different uh, different uh, sediment uh, product. If the strain, we use large content of large content of sediment, it can be, it shows relatively low strength, but it can be used as fuel material. It uh, has uh, medium strength, larger than seven MPA in compressive strength. It can be used as partition block. Uh, it, if the strength uh, is higher than 30 MPA, it can be used as paving blocks. We also detect the Mechanism, mechan mechanical strength, leachability test, conduct the cost, cost and the benefit assessment. And we find the recycled sediment into the paving block is optimal scenario because this one is the most profitable option. Also, in order to overcome the drawbacks of low water resistant of MGO system, we add some silica rich materials because we want to uh, we want to combine them together to generate the magnesium silica hydrate. This is very stable materials. It can improve the mechanical strength and the water resistance of sediment blocks. Also, if the sediment has high highly contaminated by the arsenic, the OPC system may be not very efficient. So we add additional calcium rich materials to provide a stable calcium arsenic complex to in enhance the immobilization. Also incorporation of red mud promotes the iron, iron uh, arsenic complexion to reduce the leachability of arsenic. Uh, for some 
some sediment with high content of organic content contaminants such as PA, PAH, PCBs. So the, the cement is not very efficient. So we add some biochar to benefit the immobilization of such organic contaminants. So uh, biochar also can have a beneficial effect on the cement hydration during the internal, internal cooling effect. So biochar immobilizing contaminants and promote the environmental acceptance. So way forward, uh, we also want to reuse uh, power plant fuel gas or cement plant fuel gas for the CO2 cooling of sediment blocks. And we also want to use low carbon cement or carbon negative cementation materials to produce the sedi sediment blocks. Also, we want to enhance the functional property of sediment blocks to enhance the value of the final products. So this, that's all. This is my presentation. Thank you.